Hey folks, how are you? Today I come to respond to your requests, my friends. You had doubts, you tried to replicate this landing, but you couldn't. So today, I come here to do a breakdown of this procedure to try to clear up all your doubts. The pattern I used to make this landing is the same one used by the Hornet. I only used an aircraft carrier and our F-16. I didn't use mods or anything else. In the Viper, I reduced the amount of fuel to 30% and didn't put anything in its pylons. This is to reduce our weight during landing. So, next, I will show you in detail the important points so that you can also make this landing. Let's go. Down our hook. Here's the command to lower the hook. We are at 800 feet. Let's slow down to 350 knots. In this pattern, we started with 350 knots and 800 feet. So we want to get these two values. When the carrier is in this position, it's time to do the brake. Eight hundred feet and three fifty knots, or almost. Okay, brake. Now we want to maintain six hundred feet. Curse one one three. Six hundred feet, because in this pattern, at the end of this curve, we have to be at that altitude. One one three, because we were heading two ninety three. Subtracting 180 degrees gives us 113 heading. Opening the air brake. Opening the air brake because it's difficult to slow down the 16. With it open, it will help us. For the landing gear, we have to be below 250 knots. The flaps activate automatically when we activate the landing gear. 250 knots, gear down. Flaps of the 16 are automatic. A warn will sound soon because we are below 200 knots and at idle. So we will have to accelerate a little, but not too much because we still have to descend to 600 feet. Normally, we don't trim the 16, but here we will. Here we are going to trim because the pattern with the F-18 is trimmed. This helps a lot because our fighter will fly practically all the time at the correct AOA angle. This is important because if we are out of the right angle, our hook will not catch the cables. We have to place the velocity vector at the center of this ruler. However, our plane will want to climb. Therefore, we will have to reduce our speed to something between 145 and 150 knots to stay level. Okay, try to maintain 600 feet. Okay, we got everything. 600 feet, 145 knots, heading 113, and we are at the correct AOA angle. We are ready to begin the final curve or base curve. Final check. Turning off the landing gear lights. We don't land on carriers with the landing gear lights on. Passing the stern of the carrier, we begin the final turn. Starting the base curve. To prevent us from losing altitude, we have to accelerate to around 160 knots. In this curve, we have to try to keep around 500 feet and an angle close to 30 degrees.
In the F-18, we would be around 130, 140 knots. At this point, we begin to make the necessary corrections. Let's go down a little. Also close the curve more so that we don't exceed the center line of the landing strip. You can press the uncage button to clear the HUD a little, making easier to see the runway. Here we will reduce between 145 and 150 knots. In a normal landing, we usually place this dashed line at the beginning of the runway or at the touchdown point. It shows us where we want to land. The objective is to place the velocity vector on it and it where we want to land. So, this is the image we are looking for here the dashed lines at or slightly above the cables, and the velocity vector aligned with this line, while also having the correct AOA angle. It's also important to keep this speed. If we are too fast, we may not catch the cables because we will be out of the correct AOA angle. Finally, not only here with the 16, but also with the other fighters, try to position the velocity vector at this point on the landing strip. This helps compensate the carrier movement. Did you like guys? The link to the original video is above. Share in the comments what you think. Give your like and subscribe. Until the next video, see ya.